here, we're stopping the bad guys stealing money from people. That's the right thing to do. So actually, when you go home at night, you get a really good feeling that you've helped the sort of bigger cause of making sure that our customers are safe online. What if you could be a cybercrime superhero? In the UK, there's been a 1,000% increase in the number of attacks in just 18 months, and £4.6 billion was lost to hacking last year. So that's where you come in. There are over 12,800 job opportunities in digital technologies in Scotland, many of them in cybersecurity. It's well paid. The average cybersecurity salary in Scotland is £51,200. That's more than double the average salary. UK companies sell cybersecurity worldwide, and sales are growing by 15% a year. So a career in cybersecurity is your passport to success anywhere in the world. Find out more at digitalworld.net. Hello and welcome to Cyber Skills Live. My name is Craig Steele. I'm a computer scientist, gadget geek, and I'm interested in all things tech. Hello, my name is David. I'm a web developer, multimedia artist, and pizza enthusiast. And I'm also interested in things related to tech. You're about to get hands on and learn cybersecurity skills in this interactive activity. Now, we need more people with digital skills to help us make, more, help make us more resilient against cyber attacks. In Scotland, for every two jobs in this area, there's only one applicant, so there's a huge opportunity for a career. And there's a very, very wide range of careers for everybody. Technology skills are really important and useful, but it's not just a career for techies. There's a lot more than sitting behind a computer. There are jobs in marketing, digital forensics, legal project management, and more. It goes across all sectors and skills, and there really is a job for everyone. We're here in the Digital Den in Glasgow, and today on the live stream, we've got over 800 people taking part from right across Scotland and around the world. We're also here with Cyber Resilience Specialist, Kirsty. Hi everyone, I'm Kirsty. I work in the Cyber Resilience Unit in the Scottish Government. Um, I'm looking forward to taking part in the live stream here today. 
Uh, so we've got lots of you taking part in this live stream. So I'm going to give a few shout outs to some of you that are attending. So if I shout out your college or your university or your school, please give a big cheer and a round of applause in your in your area so that I can make sure that I can hear you from the digital den. So the first one that's getting the shout out is going to be Inverness College. Can I get a shout out? I think I need it a little bit louder in Inverness <laughs> College because you're a wee bit further away. So Inverness College, big cheer in your class. Brilliant, I think I could hear you this time. Uh, what about Denny High School? I know that you're taking part. Yes, excellent. Aaron High School. West Calder High School. West College, Scotland. And Johnson High School. Great. So we've got lots of people taking part and we've actually got people from America joining us. So shout out to America. Hi there. So if you're in your class today, if your teachers are, have got um, uh, access to the Twitter, if you can take photos and share it with us, it would be great to see that today. So if you tag the photos using the hashtag CyberSkillsLive and the at handle is at DigitalWorldHQ. Today, we are all going to become ethical hackers. OK, Dougal, uh, let's play the intro video and get started. Nowadays, many shops and companies rely on technology to run their business. From taking customer orders online to emailing suppliers to dealing with other businesses. We need more cyber security specialists to help defend against cyber criminals. In this interactive lesson, you'll step into the shoes of a cyber security consultant and help a business test their website security. Your client is Old Lang Slice, a pizza restaurant in Presswick. They're about to launch a new website that lets customers make orders online. And they've asked us to perform an investigation of their website to help spot security issues. First, you'll investigate the public facing side of the website. You'll gather intelligence to create a report about the security of their website. Then you'll investigate the software and tools the website is using. This will help build up an even better idea of where they might need to improve the security. Finally, using the intelligence you've gathered, you'll try and find a security vulnerability and use it to break the website. Old Lang Slice is a fictional pizza company, so you won't actually be breaking or stealing anything but it will give you an insight into how businesses can protect themselves online from cyber attacks. Now it's time to start security testing. Follow the instructions and let's see how many security vulnerabilities you can find. So we've been asked by Old Lang Slice to carry out a security test on their website. To do this, Go to cyberskillslesson.com, scroll down and click on how to steal a pizza, and then click start the activity. Our goal is to find as many security issues with the Old Lang Slice site as possible and to collect them into a report that we can show the restaurant management. To do this, you're going to be asked a series of questions on the app. Just fill out the questions and go through the website to get the answers. So there's a report website and then there's the actual Old Lang Slice website. Probably the best way to do this is to have it open in two tabs so that you can have the report where you answer the questions on one tab and then you have the Old Lang Slice website on the other tab. Now, this type of security test is what's called a passive attack. So at this stage, our role as cybersecurity specialists, as ethical hackers, is to gather the sort of intelligence, gather that information, rather than actively trying to break into the site. This is usually the first stage of any sort of security testing. And our goal is to create this report that we can present to Old Lang Slice and tell them what problems they might be facing. And every time you submit a piece of intelligence, we'll be able to see what you've been submitting as well. So why don't you get started on that? Start working through the questions and we'll be able to, if you've got any questions, we'll be able to try and help you out with that as well. So let's see how people are getting on. Great, I can see a lot of people joining the website now, starting to answer the questions on the report. That's great. It'll ask you to create a little avatar as well, which we're going to use to identify you, since we're not going to use your names for legal reasons. And we'll have that up on the, the web stream as well. 
that once we start getting further on. So for example, Amy from Bannerman High School, I can see that you've answered that question correctly. Well done for being able to count how many pizzas are listed on the homepage. Um, I think you actually miscounted them, so why don't you try counting them again? <laughs> Some good research going on here with Clydebank High School. Keep that up. I can see some people as well giving answers and they're saying they don't know the answer. I'd suggest that what you would probably want to do is look a bit further on the website. It might not all be there, you might have to scroll down, you might have to look on a few different pages. But as security testers, it's important that we are thorough in what we do. We don't just look at it and say, yeah, that's fine. We want to make sure we've checked through it completely. Patience is a good skill as well, I've found, in security testing. Sometimes you might not notice it the first time, but you give something a second look and something will become apparent. So while people are answering these questions just now, why is this the type of thing that a company might ask us to perform? Like, wh why would we be asked to be a security it's, It seems kind of weird, doesn't it, that a company would want to pay someone to hack their, their <laughs> business and possibly damage their reputation. But the fact is, if they didn't pay us to, uh, to investigate their site, an, uh, an attacker could do it and they might actually steal something for real. Mm -hmm. So we're helping Old Lang Slice by basically being an ethical, ethical hackers and investigating and finding the problems before a criminal does. Great. Let's have a look at how you're getting on here. Good answers here. Checking to see when, yep, I can see the Digital Hub are doing well answering some questions. West Calder High School as well. Johnston High School as well. Lewis has done well. We're getting a lot of correct answers and a lot That's of good, good intelligence so far. These people must be have been ethical hackers before, perhaps. So we've got questions coming in as well about telephone numbers trying to identify the technical support team mm. so obviously things like this companies have got um, telephone numbers staff names addresses things like that advertised on the website is that not like the normal type of thing you would expect a company to have why is that why is that a security issue I mean it is, it is normal you, you know you'd expect to be able to get in touch with a company you'd expect to go on a website and be able to find contact details the problem is in some cases you could an attacker could use that information maliciously so for example, if I knew the name of who the accounts manager was at a company, I could pretend to be that person and use social engineering to, mm -hmm. uh, to rip someone off. Kirsty, something about um, social engineering, is that becoming a more popular way that people are attacking websites? Yes, um, absolutely. It's much easier to manipulate the, the human as opposed to sometimes the technology. Um, it's much easier to pretend to be someone that you're not, and we see this as a rise, um, as a sort of way that you know hackers and cyber criminals are, are using that method to to bring down companies, businesses, mm -hmm. and actually individuals as well. But I, I noticed what you were saying about they're gathering this sort of report of um, the website. You know, they're building up this sort of intelligence to report back. I imagine it a bit like. Um, you know, if you're ever going to uh, get in like a sort of house report kind of done, mm -hmm. the person that kind of goes in and has a look and says, oh, is your boiler working or is that in place or do the windows need fixed? That's kind of what you're doing at the moment with the website. You're kind of seeing what, what's, 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 uh, what's noted. Uh, yeah, what's you're available. observing things observing rather it. than actually. Yeah, they're not going to actually fix the window. It's just more of a case of building that report to get it fixed. Yeah, suppose it might be that the company wants to keep all this information on the website because if you're a business now, you might want to have like your opening times and stuff like mm. that listed. But it's not up to us to decide that. We have to just create the report and say, well, this is the type of information you're sharing out there. Let's see how people are getting on at the moment. We're getting a lot of correct answers and actually the Digital Hub has given us some information about who's designed the website. Well done, Abby and Connor and B Slack Community High School. 
Um, well done, you've identified the payment card processor. All of this intelligence is oh. going to give us more information about you know, the state of the old Lang Slice site and what we need to do for them. What type of, like, do we have an idea of how many much intelligence we've gathered at this point, or? Well, <laughs> we, get, we do have a vague idea. Um, prob probably uh, hundreds, hundreds of data points. Starling High School's doing well with uh, three, 321 pieces of intelligence. That's quite a lot. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, it's quite a fair bit. Starling High has a lot of people taking part. Yeah, these are people's actual avatars that you've been putting in earlier. Lord's Secondary School. Wow, lots Happy. of intelligence gathered there. It's a lot more avatars than I anticipated <laughs> when I designed that. That's good, it's a party. It's a it certainly is. I hope we've got enough pizza to go round. <laughs> Well done, Grangemouth High School as well. So let's spend a few more minutes answering these questions. Not everyone's answered all the questions yet. Grangemouth High School, I know you've got less people taking part than some of the schools, so well done for collecting that so far. So some of the questions as well are asking about security updates mm -hmm. as well. Um, why is it important to have your security? Like. What, what, what would what would happen if you haven't done that? Well, the thing is, cyber cyber criminals are very good at keeping track of things that are wrong with with your apps. So, for instance, if I have my iPhone and I don't update it, an attacker might use a database of information to know that I'm running an outdated version of my iPhone software. And if there's a problem with that version, then they could exploit it and potentially, you know, ruin me. <laughs> so, attackers are very savvy at identifying problems in in software and using, using that knowledge maliciously. So it's important to keep your software up to date so that these patches are applied and your software is not vulnerable. Kirsty, is this something that you should be doing at home as well? <laughs> Absolutely. This is something that you should be doing as much uh, as quickly as possible with your updates. In, in fact, there's a way that you can protect yourself and your devices at home, and that's to turn on automatic updates where you don't need to remember to go in and do that. It will do it automatically for you. And that is one of the best pieces of advice from the National Cyber Security Centre. They are basically the, the most authoritative source for cyber security. They're part of GCHQ and their advice is to make sure that you update your software because the that's how um, they can attack those vulnerabilities. I saw some of the questions coming in and people are asking like, you know, what is the best way to do things protecting yourself against cyber criminals? And one of the best things that you can do is make sure that the software on your website, sorry, the software on your own computer systems like tablets and smartphones is as up to date as possible. That's one of the most fundamental things that you can do. And we're proving that today because I can see from some of these answers that are coming in, you are detecting old versions of the website as well. I, I saw some people saying that the website hasn't been updated in over a month. Would that cause an issue maybe? Well, it could mean that they just haven't changed the content on the website, like the text and the images. So that might not be a problem. I mean, it might mean that it's not as, as useful as a website, but the software might not be out of date. As someone who runs a website though, do you not find that there's updates almost every day that you need to do for some websites? Uh, I don't know, I just get my clients to do it normally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tend to do it myself. Well I do it and I find that like once every day or two, even if there's just one or two updates, it's just worth doing to yeah. make it sure. So I think if they haven't updated it for over a month, that might, that might play an important role later on. Hmm. I can see that we've got a lot of interesting answers for some of our open-ended questions as well. For instance, we asked you, what do you think is the most delicious pizza? And it seems that Sausage Supreme is winning by quite a bit. Yep. Also, the Vegan Sizzler is placing quite popularly. Yep. And a lot of people uh, seem to just like meat and cheese. Popular toppings on pizzas. What's your favourite pizza? Uh, stuffed crust with just cheese. Yep. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of cheese. It's quite basic, yeah. <laughs> I, I like, like uh, I like pepperoni pizza. Kirsty, what's your favourite oh, pizza? I'm probably going to be in that controversial uh, pizza party of I like pineapple, the Hawaiian pizza. <laughs> I like to pretend I'm on holiday when I eat it, so that's uh, bring a bit of sunshine into my pizza. <laughs> 
Great. So we're at the stage now where I can tell that most of you have done a really good job of answering these questions. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to take it a bit further. So we're going to make, um, we, we've gathered a lot of the basic intelligence. Let's try and get a bit deeper with the information. So the next set of questions are going to be getting you to investigate parts of the website that you normally wouldn't expect a normal user to be going to visit. So it's still a type of passive attack. You know, you're not breaking anything, but it will help us uncover some more intelligence that we can include in the, re in the report. So let's move on to these questions now. I can tell some of you for the command section, some of you have taken the terminal, terminal commands and given them as your answer. What you actually want to do is run those commands in the terminal itself, so copy and paste them. But also you need to change it so that it works for the Old Lang Slice website. So if you've just copied and pasted the command into the answer, that ain't it. It's not work. <laughs> That's not it. Abby from Beeslack Community High School said it, a good way of Old Lang Slice improving their website might be to update it more often. Mm. Dan from Portlethen Academy, he has identified that the CMS that's being used is Weber 3.1. You're just giving it away there, Craig. Let's see what else is coming in. We've had some really good suggestions for how they could improve the website. Uh, Avia from Denny High School has suggested maybe they shouldn't actually say when the website was last updated mm. because that might suggest, you know, no one, if it's not been updated for a while, maybe You're it's, it away. it's out yeah, of date. Point. It could be attacked. Great. Oh, some people have managed to find a few hidden pages. That's really good. Keep sending them in. Okay, let's have a look. Let's just check it up. So if you're having trouble getting onto the Old Lang Slice website, it just might be because a lot of people in your class are on the same website right now, but it's it's up, we're still testing it. I yep. can see it's it's fine. So maybe just close that tab and open it again. You could always try mashing F5, see if that gets you through. <laughs> That's not a very technical solution, but it works. It works. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Pressing the F5 key, yeah, if you press the F5 key, that will refresh it. That's a bit like the, have you tried turning it off and back on again? Shoot. <laughs> 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 exactly, Kirsty, you're like, oh, the website's not working. Have you tried going on it again? <laughs> <laughs> well done, Mikey, at Grangemouth High School. You got the, you're the first person to get the SSL certificate question right. If you're struggling on that one, remember that you need to, as Craig said already, put the command into the terminal and then tell us the response that comes out of the the terminal at the bottom. There's a lot of people I can see copying and pasting the terminal commands into the answer box. That's not what you want to do in this question. <laughs> David. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, we're talking about finding hidden web pages and stuff like, mm -hmm. is that the type of thing that normally companies would do? Like, um, I think if you were, do you mean that as a, an investigation? Yeah, like, oh, well, is that like a normal thing? Do people have? Well, if you have a website and for example, if I had a blog and I had some pages that I weren't ready for people to see, if I had that on the internet, at, you know, davidsblog.com slash secret, people, people can still find that if they guess the URL. Mm -hmm. So 
even if you don't tell people what it is, it's still possible to guess URLs sometimes, especially for admin pages or back-end logins, because a lot of systems, e-commerce systems and website systems will use the same links, the same URLs. Yeah, I think it's quite common for companies to have like old pages up that they don't use anymore. And you could just accidentally stumble across it by mistake. And you're like, this is outdated information. And, mm. and maybe, I mean, what, what are ways that companies could protect themselves from well, that type they, of thing? They could password protect the page if they didn't want anyone to see it. So you'd have to put a password in before you could uh, log onto it. Or they could just uh, not publish it in the first place, I, yeah. I think would be the best way to avoid that. So maybe like deleting old pages you don't need yeah. and definitely not publishing something live unless you mean it unless to Unless you happen. want people to see like it. This, this has definitely happened in real life. Like I think, was it you that told me that, was it Apple had mm -hmm. sort of put a page online for a new product? I can't remember what it was. I think it was like an iPhone launch or something a few years back, but people guessed that the link was iPhone X mm -hmm. and they, they got all the the images and the information about the iPhone before it was even announced at the keynote. So do people, like, could you use something like, we're talking about trying to find like admin login pages or like hidden pages on the website. If you were trying to find the admin login page, could you just go to something like Google and type in like, search for admin pages and? Yeah, people, attackers do that quite a lot actually. There, there are things you can use, uh, I think some people call it Google Foo, where you can type certain searches into Google and for, for instance, find loads of admin login pages, mm -hmm. find un unlocked webcams, you know, open streams, all kinds of things. So what is, how would you like stop Google from sort of like archiving all those things about a website? Um, there's a thing you can, if you're making your own website, you could use robots.txt, which is like a, a text file that tells web crawlers like Google and Bing what parts of the website they're not allowed to go onto. Um, but the problem is that it also kind of would tell an attacker what pages you don't want people to look at. Yeah, because that's just a public file. You're yeah. only asking them, please don't look at these pages. So I would say just don't put it online. Okay. That's probably the best, best advice. Brilliant. Kirsty, have we had any more questions or anything interesting coming in you've been able to see? Well, I was looking at how to make the website more secure mm -hmm. and a few suggestions have come in. Um, Molly Beth from Lourdes Secondary School said maybe not to put as much information on the website as they did, mm -hmm. which I think is probably a good idea. Um, it's, it's all about risk management of deciding should you put this information out there and w when you do put that information out there, know that it's available for people to either use or exploit that information. So, you know, putting people's um, job details, is they can that might be useful, but also it might be a case of they might know who who works there and pretend to be that person um we would you like a sort of um sort of s cyber skills kind of question yeah, go like, for it so mm. um one of the questions was from nathan at portlethan academy he asked um how much demand is there for cyber related jobs okay so specifically this type of job that we are doing today is probably called some sort of security tester or penetration tester or something Ethical like hacking or Ethical something hacking, like that. Ethical hacking, yeah. The forecast for jobs in Scotland is actually, it's going to go up by about 3% every year. So there's a lot of jobs in this area at the moment. In Scotland, there's about 20,655. I didn't Very just specific, read that, I just know that. Yeah. In Scotland, there's about 20,655 people who are actively doing the job in this in Scotland at the moment. Do you know how much they happen to earn annually? No, how much? I believe they earn £42,640 a year or up to that. So it is a highly paid job and there's lots of opportunities for people getting involved. And essentially what you're doing now is you're getting practice at this. You're getting that experience of what would it be like to be an ethical hacker as well. Does that answer your question, Kirsty? Does that answer, what was his name? Yeah, that was Nathan's, Nathan's question. Nathan's question, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look for another couple of questions, Kirsty, as well. I do so have one. Go for it. I thought, I've got another one for you if you like it. Um, so we had Liz from Largs Academy. Um, thanks for sending in your question. And that was, in, are there travel opportunities in this sort of field of business? Yeah, so this is a skill that's not just in demand in Scotland, but around the world as well. And some of the big companies who would be employ employing people in Scotland 
actually have offices located around the world as well. So certainly there could be opportunities to go about and, and doing it in different countries as well. It's not just a shortage that we have in Scotland. There's, there's gaps in this area around the world too. Plus, if you're working on a laptop, it's quite easy to travel. You know, you could be a freelance security consultant. A lot of people do this. They, they just travel about from place to place with a laptop <laughs> and just hack on the go. Sounds like you're on the run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, possibly. Yeah. You don't want to stay somewhere for too long. <laughs> Maybe not a good yeah. look. Maybe we'll do another workshop on how to stay safe on hotel Wi-Fi then, if that's mm. what your role is going to be. We've got a lot of intelligence come in now. I think we're pretty much on Great, we'll give it another, need. great, a couple of, maybe two more minutes then. We'll have a look at that. Yeah, go on, Kirsten. Other things that I've seen, like a lot of people kind of coming in and like, asking and, and hearing about. So people are like, you know, do you enjoy your job and do you like it? And um, you know, what advice kind of would you give to people that might want to take it on as a as a career? sure. So what, a, what, what would you say? That's, that's, what you asking me? that's a question. <laughs> I was asking you, but I would say yeah. It's, it's I think it, it's a good. It's a good. It's definitely a good. Um, industry and area to sort of work in because everything's changing all the time people are coming out with new technologies or um new ways of breaking down those those you know set up vulnerability i don't hang on let me go back so all of these new technologies need people to be able to defend them and i think it's kind of an exciting industry to be working in because every day is going to be different um, and you might have to learn different skills and you know work in different teams and there's definitely um, skills that you need in to work in this field that you might not be aware of so there's things like if you're good at team working which is what you're all doing at the net just now you know gathering intelligence as a group as, as your school and um, if you're good at like communicating with people then these are skills that are going to help in this sort of cyber security field and I'd say it is quite an exciting one and, and a good one because you feel like you're protecting people maybe you're what, what is it, a superhero mm -hmm. yeah yeah Today. <laughs> Okay, so I've just been analysing this intelligence that started to come through now. Whoops. And um, what I can tell is that, have you got it here? Yes. Yeah, we've Hang got on. a lot of intel coming in. It's kind of flooding in, actually. Brilliant. And uh, the old Lang Slice management team will be very happy with all of this reconnaissance that we've done. So what we've been able to identify is that the, the CMS that's being used, the content management system, is called Weber 3.1. Mm -hmm. Now, that's an older version of Weber 3.1. And according to these documentation notes here, in Weber 3.1, there's a vulnerability on the admin panel screen. Okay. So, and the vulnerability is that it's, it's subject to an SQL injection attack, which is a, a type of attack that kind of lets you run uh, code on another computer. You can kind of inject a query and do something to the database that you're not supposed to do. So for instance, maybe you could run an attack that would make you an admin user on a site. I think that sounds like a fun in. thing to do. Should we try that? So yes, now that we've discovered one of these vulnerabilities, what you're going to do now is follow the instructions on the screen. We'll see if we can perform one of these attacks. Follow the instructions and see if you can finally get that free pizza. Now's the time to do it. So I'll be able to have- oh, We've had a pizza <laughs> stolen, stolen already. already. Excellent, good Impressive. start. That was quick. That was very quick. I wonder if that was me this morning. Probably not. <laughs> Considering I don't know anything about the, <laughs> the vulnerabilities. It might be. Well, we've had one stolen, so that's a good start. But let's see if we can get any more. I'm going to work out um, what everybody's favourite pizza. Good idea. We we'll get the, get the orders in. What topping did they for? What problem? Mm. What topping? One, um, someone from Stirling High School said that their favourite pizza is a haggis pizza. Great. So I think that's that is going to be avail that's available at the moment. That's the pizza of the month on the Old Lang Slice it? website. Yeah, Haggis Pizza. Well, a spicy chicken. I'm, I, if I say too many of these out loud, I'm going to start getting hungry. Mm -hmm. But luckily, if we have pizza stolen, maybe you'll share it with me. <laughs> I 
I'm getting excited now. Can you get in? Can you follow those instructions? See if you can get a pizza. Yes, we've oh. got our first order in. Oh. Brilliant. Inverness, Inverness College. College. Well done. <laughs> Keep going. Oh, even more. B Slack Community High School, well done. There's a pizza on its way to you now. Literally. <laughs> well, not literally, but across the screen. A digital pizza. <laughs> An image of a pizza <laughs> is on its way to you. Keep going. Oh. Sterling. <laughs> Sterling High School, well done. Yes. Stuff crust as well, good choice. <laughs> Do you know, I'm finding this more fun than robbing a bank. Yeah. Stealing pizzas, probably just as rewarding. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Come on, more pizzas. So I estimate that's about forty pounds worth of pizza that we've stolen. Yeah, already. yeah, maybe if you're like Domino's or something like. <laughs> oh, another one. Well done. Going to a home address. That Not one. applicable. <laughs> <laughs> that's really secret. Yeah. I mean, the best hackers will be anonymous. So. Yes, yeah, suppose. <laughs> Get your orders in now. And remember to, once you have hacked the pizza, to get your teacher to take a photograph or a screenshot of the receipt and send that to Digital World HQ yes. with the hashtag CyberSkillsLive. Come on, pizza. So I would suggest when it comes to running that injection, mm copy and paste the code if possible in. Absolutely. Uh, I wouldn't attempt to type it because you're more likely to make a mistake that way. And unless you get this command exactly right, because essentially what you're doing is rather than typing in like your username and your password, you're typing in the actual code that you want the website to run. This is, although this is like a very basic form of attack, this is exactly the way some of the largest companies have been attacked. There was a telecommunications company who were attacked by this way of, you know, and, and it's really one of the first things that you learn when you're doing cybersecurity. How would you defend against this type of attack, David? By keeping your software up to date. As one, yeah. <laughs> in this case, since we learned that the vulnerability was in an, an old version of the Weber CMS, yeah. which I have to say, is, I don't think is like an industry recommend, recommended CMS. It's not as popular as things like WordPress, but. No. Um, oh, well done. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, uh, if you don't keep it up to date, this is bound to happen. Mm -hmm. And there are people using botnets prowling the internet, just uh, performing attacks on sites willy nilly, kind of just aut uh, automatically. So it might not even be a human being that's attacking the site. The attack that you're running could be done by a robot. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to stay up to date. Great. Great, I can see people working through this now. Can tell some people have accidentally closed their web browsers and come back to join us that's fine keep playing along i can see we actually have uh 33 pizzas stolen uh, <laughs> which is fantastic Got a question <laughs> the live stream. yes um, rachel grant from uh, west calder Asking, how do you steal pizzas? In real life or well, on the website? Yeah. Here, yeah. So what you're going to do is follow the instructions that are on the screen. You should see a link that will take you to an admin panel. And then what you're going to do is on the instructions below that, there's a, there's a line of code. And what you need to do is copy and paste that line of code onto the page that loads up. And then you need to create a coupon, right? Yep. That's All the, the instructions are on the page. Uh, it's a wee bit involved, but it is worth it because you'll get a virtual yeah. pizza. There's three steps. You have to copy and paste a line of code and then type the name of a coupon and the number 100 and then hit go. Yeah. Just in case this comes, well, mm -hmm. just in case in the URL for that. Yeah. It's, it's, um, report.cyberskillslesson.com yep. and then the link to the admin the page. admin panel is just the button on the page yep or if you can't click on the button then go to oldlangslice.co.uk forward slash admin i think was the intelligence that came in mm -hmm. yep yep mm 
That's it. Code.uk forward slash admin. And Perfect. then you put in in the username, put in the code. Yep. And then hit log. Now we're getting some in. There we go. We've got 36 pizzas stolen. Well done to everyone that's uh, attending there. Oh, I have a question while I'm here. Go for it. Just uh, out of interest. Let me go back to it. Um, it, it was a question about from Grangemouth, Grangemouth High School. I think it's Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, she asked, how do you get a career in this? So there's different um, ways that you know you can you can do this as a career. Um, so and if you're going into fifth and sixth year of school, you might want to do it as a foundation apprenticeship. And there's ones in software development or hardware and system support, um, and that kind of provides sort of hands-on experience as well as studying it. There's obviously opportunities in modern apprenticeships that you can get involved in. There's work placements that will help get into this career as well, where you, you're actually in, in the job learning as you go along. Um, there's different kind of subjects that you might want to study if you are wanting to do this as a career. There's ethical hacking, information security, computing <laughs> science and cybersecurity. I've got I think we're getting quite a few coming in yeah. the, quite a few coming in at the same time. I, like I kinda want to try and grab one. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I hope that answered it. But there, there's lots of information on I think it's apprenticeship dot Modern apprenticeship dot Scott. There was there there will be a um a link. It will all be linked on the Digital World website, so you can take a look there about how to take it forward as a career opportunity. Brilliant. Let's get a few more pizzas being stolen then. We've still got a couple of minutes to do that. Excellent. Well done, uh, Ross, Callum, Olivia, Jack, Ross, Zane, Ewan and Matthew, Natasha, Fraser, Robin at uh, Stirling High School. Very well done. Jacob and Joe as well, we can see you. Steve, you've just stolen a pizza as well. Josh. Caden, Alex, Debbie Mack. Well done. <laughs> Got quite a few now. Let's have two more minutes. <laughs> Very good work. 179 so far, good. Yeah. I hope you're hungry. <laughs> Let's take two more minutes, see how many more we can get within these last two minutes. So Craig, what's your uh, favourite condiment to have with a pizza? Uh, I generally just have it like as it comes on the pizza itself. What, just dry? No, <laughs> no, like you know, you get the tomato sauce on it. I don't add anything to it other than you don't like, have a dip or anything. No, no. Some people would use like a garlic dip. Some people might have a garlic dip mm. or some or or garlic, garlic hair or cheese. Yeah. But no, I'm I'm quite happy to just eat the pizza itself. <laughs> Side of wedges. Look, I might have, yeah, I push wedges. <laughs> Tim, well done. <laughs> Chloe, excellent. Well done, Raz, Rajveer and Sadie. And Oliver. At, at Lourdes. And yep, Rosie. Sixty-one. That's going to be a lot of orders. Old Lang Slice are going to be really pleased that we've managed to get this answered for them. So thank you very much for helping us steal these pizzas. It's all, it's all still up and running. There might be a, sometimes if 
people in your school, there's a lot of people on the same website. Some ways it might work is it might slow down your website a little bit, but everything I can see from here, the website is all still up and running. You should be able to get in and steal some pizzas. Excellent. Well done to people from other schools, colleges and or groups <laughs> who have stolen... Collectively. <laughs> lots of pizzas. Uh, Matthew and Jade, very nice work. Over 282 pizzas, that's a lot of calories that's getting out there. Brilliant. So, before we wrap up today as well, um, we've got one more task that we want you to do on the website. So we're going to put up some feedback questions as well. We want to find out what you enjoyed and what you would maybe like to see in more of these live lessons as well in the future. So we'll put these um, questions up for you to answer just now. Also, Kirsty, what other ways can, what other things are coming up that um, teachers or schools might want to get involved in? Yes. There's um, lots of different cyber security related activities that are taking place just now. Um, so we have, we're going to be doing another cyber skills live lesson. The next one will be in December and we have another opportunity to do it again next year in February where we are running our Cyber Scotland Week uh, 2020 and that will be between the 17th to the 23rd of February. So teachers put that on in your calendar I'd like all of everybody to be involved in it range of activities taking place across Scotland and everybody can take part in the in the live lesson during that week and um, do you want to see some of the other ones sure go for it go for it there's uh, lots of other ones so there's uh, cyber discoveries which is taking registration just now that's for 14 to 18 year olds I believe you can go into um, cyber discovery um, and Google and you'll find a website for that again that's got a range of different activities to get involved in um, yeah that's fine perfect Great. so keep answering those questions uh, thanks very much for your feedback that you're providing so far um, keep coming in but you will be if you if you haven't been satisfied that you didn't get the chance to finish hacking your pizza you'll be able to come back to the website and play it again at some other point as well and we look forward to you to having we look forward to having you on the live stream as well for our next cyber skills live lesson so why don't we just get things sorted here and we'll start pulling together that report for old lang slice well done thank you very much and we'll see you next time <laughs>